In this video, we'll walk through the process of getting offline maps saved on the Outly app to get you ready to go off-grid and use Outly to navigate in the field. Let's start by assuming that I've already planned a trip on the Outly website map. In this case, I've analyzed and selected my hunt area and dropped some points for spots that I want to camp, park at a trailhead, and check out during my hunt. Instead of a hunt, this same process could easily translate to a camping trip, a day of fishing, or an off-roading expedition. Plan your trip in the fully featured website map where you have a bigger screen to view the map layers and see details. Create points on the website to mark any spots that you want to visit during your trip. Then we'll jump over to the mobile app. Once I log in and let the initial maps download, I can access the My Places menu, select points, and I see that my points automatically sync from the web to the app. This works both ways, so if I add or edit points on the app, those changes will sync back to the web too. So I can tap this icon on the screen and see instructions that all I need to do is press and hold a spot on the map to create a new point. I'll name this one test as a quick example. I can also edit points to change their name or add notes out in the field and those sync when I'm back online. Now I tap a point to jump to that spot on the map. Then I'm going to enable the land layer, then the trails and roads layer. Just like the web map, I can toggle the layers, highlight allowed use, and click on layer features to view details about them. Let's also enable the wildlife layer to see elk concentration and migration areas during my September archery hunt. We can view hunt unit boundaries as well. These are a subset of the map layers available compared to the website, but we're quickly adding more to get the mobile app caught up, so stay tuned. Now before we head out into the woods, we need to download the area so we have our base maps and layers available when we're completely disconnected without Wi-Fi or cell service. I select the plus icon on the map, then tap download map. The area shown on this next screen shows the extent of what will be downloaded. 40 miles wide for normal resolution and 10 miles wide if I select high res. It's also important to note that both the base maps and the layers will be included in the download package regardless of what you have enabled when you download. Let's first download a normal res area. We'll hit continue and then name our map unit 12 normal. This message pops up informing me that you can pause and resume a map while it's downloading. Or you can long press, which means press and hold, on the map's title to delete it from your device. So we'll select got it, and then the progress indicator shows the download is in process. I can test pausing the map by tapping the pause icon in the center of the progress indicator. Note that the download will pause itself if you leave the app while the downloads are in progress. Then we tap the play icon to continue the download and wait for that one to complete. It typically takes just a couple of minutes and decent Wi-Fi connection to download each map. Once the download is complete, the progress icon changes to a white info icon. I can tap that icon to see details about the map. I can also edit the name and notes fields. Now let's go back and download a high res version of the map so we can see the difference. I follow the same process this time I select high res instead. So now I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the screen capture to get on with it. Now I have both the normal and high resolution versions of the map downloaded. You can see the boundary of the downloaded regions as bright green squares on the map. If you don't wanna show those, you can jump into settings and toggle show offline map boundaries. To double check the downloads and see the difference in resolution, I'll put my phone in airplane mode to simulate I'm offline. I recommend you put your phone in airplane mode as much as possible when you're out in the woods to preserve the battery. The GPS chip on your phone doesn't require a cell connection and it'll work just fine in airplane mode. Now I'll zoom in on the area that I downloaded. I can see the boundaries of the high and normal resolution and on the SAP base map I can see just outside that boundary where the resolution changes. I can see high res has a bit more clarity. If I switch over to map, I can see the change in detail where only the 200 foot elevation contour lines are visible in the normal res, but the detail steps up with 40 foot contour lines in high res. 
Another important note is I zoom out, I see there's additional data available outside of the downloaded map boundary. That extra data is included in the download, but may be simplified and not as accurate. So it's important to only rely on the accuracy of map features such as land and hunt unit boundaries inside your download map region when you have spotty cell service or you're completely offline. But even in airplane mode, I can toggle the base map, enable the different layer combinations, and tap map features for details. All of your points are synced to the device automatically, so there's no need to download those. You have access to all of them offline. Finally, you can tap the location icon in the lower left of the map screen to pan and center the map at your current GPS location. If you open the app out in the woods, you may have to wait up to 30 seconds before your accurate location is acquired from the device and displayed on the map. So be patient there to make sure you know exactly where you are. Now I'm all set. I've verified that I have maps and points saved on my device and I'm ready to disconnect and spend some quality time out in the woods. Give it a shot yourself and get outside.